all y'all. So I'm going to get everybody credit today. I love worship with all y'all. Not just some of you, most of you, but all of you. Um, we get ready to get started. I just want to remember everybody to pray for Lizelle. Um, you know, I get encouragement from people. Um, when, when people stand for what they believe in, I, I know it's this church, I'm supposed to be talking about church and uh, church things, but it really and truly, it is, it, even if it's not, even if it's a total heathen, stand up for what they believe in, I get encouraged by that. You know what I mean? Uh, because it's like somebody somebody gets it. You know, somebody has somebody has something they're going to stand on, and, um, and they have the, the intestinal fortitude to do it. Does everybody know? Do I think less of people if they don't stand up, even though they believe a certain way, they don't stand for it. For a moment, I do, and then I, I understand because you know, um, some people are just shy, and they don't they don't like the confrontation. So I get that. So I, I just say that I guess to say, you know, don't be hard on them if they don't stand up for it, for whatever it is that they believe in. But let's go ahead and pray real quick, and we'll get started today. We're going to talk about: Are you a whosoever? Are you a whosoever? I'm excited about it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for all you do. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises, God. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and his atoning blood and his sacrifice for us, God, that we don't, we don't have to have anything else, God. Again, we bind the strong man. Everybody's here. Everybody's going to listen. We thank you for those that are catching us online, those that are here, especially, God, so we can grab hold of them and tell them how much we love them in Jesus' name. And, uh, God, we just we ask for your spirit to move freely still, Father. And uh, we, yield, we yield it to you, God, in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Amen. All right. Are you a whosoever? Anybody ever heard that in the Bible? Are you a whosoever? 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 You know, it's in there a lot. It's really in there quite a bit. But uh, we're going to start in Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Is, uh, I'm going to wait on page to catch up to me. I get to talking fast, y'all. But Joel chapter 2, verse 32 says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall what? Be saved, right? Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, everybody knows this is a dark, interesting time, right? Yes. Y'all, everybody does understand that. It's. Uh, I think about. We were talking to one of the people here, one of the younger folks, and uh, she says, "You know, I, I, I almost don't remember what it was like life before the mask." And that was so sad to me. You know, it was like I. I mean, I remember. I mean, for crying out loud, I was talking to somebody else the other day about uh, kids getting arrested and stuff like that. I said, you know, I remember when I was a kid, you you know, if you got arrested for doing something stupid, usually they just slap you with some community service, and that was it, you know. Maybe go tell your parents because they knew your parents were going to beat on you. And rightfully so, you shouldn't have got arrested. You deserve that. And uh, But now, I mean, like, they just throw your butt in jail. It's like serious business when, uh, you know, it, when kid, kids, you have to be able to make mistakes. Yeah, you know, if they don't kill anybody, it's going to be all right, you know. Um, otherwise, what happens, you get out on your own, and then you make all kind of crazy mistakes, and then the state has to fix you instead of your parents or whatever. But um, anyway, it's a dark time, but are we surprised? Is anybody surprised? I mean, think about it. The Bible talks about for the days are wicked. Two or 3,000 years ago, the days are wicked. Why would they not still be wicked today? Mm -hmm. Right? People are, people are still people today. But Ephesians chapter 5 Verse 15 and 16, Paul's talking to the church there in Ephesus, and it's, um, he, he's telling us how to live. How do, how do, we, how do we live? How, what is the proper protocol for walking as a Christian, as living as a Christian? You know, the things that, that your conduct, right? He says, see, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So the days were evil 2,000 years ago. What do y'all think they are today? Probably still evil, Right. Uh, even though we have more money, we have a more comfortable life than anything we've ever had. What's up? Really? I don't know what you said. Oh, I don't either. It's either on yours or it might be on the Monday thing. Check those. Okay. Yeah, because you know, I, hey, look here, y'all. I want to let y'all in on something. I'm not perfect. <laughs> okay. So let down. I'm let down. I know. Okay. <laughs> Man, I'm just kidding. It's uh, just funny because as you said, I was like, oh, did I do that? I did that, didn't I? Uh, but anyway, yeah, Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We're to walk as wise. And it, 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 that, every time I read that, I think about that poor lady that I ran into that day at the store with her mask on that says faith over fear. She's got the mask on. And I was like, that's, that's like such a 
contradiction. That's counter, you know, it's counterintuitive. It doesn't make sense. Why would you even, uh, you're embarrassing God. That's what I told her. You know, so if you want to wear a mask, you feel like it makes you safe, wear the mask. I mean, that's fine because that's just where you are. But don't put faith over fear. Mm-hmm. Or I, I did see one says, um, the Lord, what does he say? I am the Lord that heals you. And it was on the mask, and I'm going, it really makes sense. There's no faith there. Everything we do is by faith. We receive salvation by faith. We receive miracles by faith. We receive all the gifts of the Spirit by faith. And so we're, we're to walk in that. We're to walk in that as wise, redeeming the time. How is he going to redeem the time but to walk the way Jesus did? Jesus lived in victory. He didn't live in defeat. And so often Christians just live in a lifestyle of defeat. I don't understand it, but they do. But does everybody know that God always had a man? Y'all know that? God always had a man, right? Always had a man. And it would, to deliver and bring the people of Israel, God's people out of bondage, right? And so it's kind of funny because uh, I, I'm looking at this stuff, you know, I'm thinking about the, the, the movement that's going around the, uh, what's it called, Jesus Patriots, Jesus Patriotism or something like that. And I'm looking at, and I, you know, because I hear these preachers and they're talking about, you know, Donald Trump, he's going to bring us out of this. It's always a Republican going to bring us out to us. Amazing. Um, it's always somebody famous. It's never somebody that nobody knows. You know, it's the weirdest thing. I'll prophesy that this guy's going to win the election. Well, of course he will. You know, it's, it's like saying, the Lord is telling me that Ron De- Governor DeSantis in Florida is going to, going to stand on the side of freedom. Well, of course he is. That's what he's been doing for the last, like, however long he's been there. You know, you're nothing special doing that. I mean, it's common sense. But they put people, they put stock in these people, and they, and so when you see their their sermons, their sermons are talking about, let's see, who who is some deliverers that God used? Well, let's see, we got Abraham. Abraham delivered Lot. Remember that? He went in with just a little bit of people, and defeated that army, defeated all, and pulled everything out, and got all the spoils. And we know that God worked with him through that. It says he raised an army to fight an alliance of kings. Uh, from the north to save his nephew, nephew uh, Lot from hostage, being hostage, and uh, and he was captured, and Abraham fought. But Melchizedek said, "Blessed be the God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hands." So that this, the angel of the Lord, that's the earliest representation of Jesus, came and told him, "God is blessed." He didn't say, "Abraham, you're blessed. Look at what just happened. Look at what you did." He said, "What? God is blessed because God gave them over to you." And Abraham was like. You know, praise God. And right then, he gave him a tenth of everything. Take a tenth of it. You want more? And that's how I see Abraham. You want some more? <coughs> you can have it all. I don't care. You'll give me more, won't you? <coughs> but anyway, you know, so, so I hear him do the sermons, and they talk about Abraham delivered Lot. Abraham, you know, he, oh, look at what he's doing. God used a man. God used a man. Then we got Exodus. What is it? God chose Exodus chapter 3. God chose to use Moses to deliver his people. That's when he spoke to him through the burning bush. And what did Moses say? He says, you're going to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses said something to the effect of what? What, 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 uh, 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 but, 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 I, I, I don't have good, good speech. Don't worry. Shut, just, this is perfect. You can't talk. Let me do the talking for you. Has anybody ever said that to somebody? Going, let me do all the talking. I say that to patient kids all the time. Actually, it's just implied, really. Uh, but, it's, <laughs> but, you know, it's like, I, I, just let me do the talking. You just sit there, shut up and smile. You know, just just be be that useful idiot. That's what we need right now. That's what God says. Just, I need you to go do what I told you to do. So God's got a man. He takes Moses. Moses delivers the people out of his, out of Egypt, right? But we know it was God doing it through him. We see that throughout. But these are the, this is the scripture reference they're going to use. They're going to use it. See, God had a man. God used a man in Moses. God used a man in Joshua. Isn't that amazing? God, God used a man in Joshua, uh, Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 15, says, When Joshua led the people into the land of Canaan, they took possession of the land, um, and they did it through military action. I mean, they went in, they slaughtered, y'all. There was, I mean, no, God prescribed murder, not murder. What's that killing in the, in the Old Testament? God prescribed it. But you've got to go cleanse the land because it's evil. It's wicked. There's things going on that are wicked. And it says, Before Joshua ever fought a battle, a man, which is the angel of the Lord, appeared to him, and he said what? He said, I'm the commander of the army of the Lord. So Joshua knew right then, okay, this is, God's fighting. We're just here. We're the instruments that he's using, right? And so that's what they use, and they say, God sent that man. Don't you know God always sends a man? That's why we got a Trump or whoever, Biden, I don't know. Anyway, um, What's another one? David, in 1 Kings chapter 16, 2 Samuel chapter 24, 1 Chronicles chapter 11, it says God used David, sometimes singly, sing, just him. 
Uh, but God used him to defeat what? He had the armies out there with uh, David and Goliath. The king's there. The whole Israel army's there. The, the Philistines are there. God says, okay, I'll use the smallest out of everything. You know, we, we celebrate the story. God used a man. See, God used a man. Just a, just a fallible man. God used him. So that's what they say. And this is why we got we to push for this politician. We got to push for that politician. And it's like, wow, you know. So you can start to see, wow, God used Samson. There's another one, Judges. God used Samson to deliver the people. And Samson was pretty vile. But God used him, right? Whoa. So that's how we know we need to vote Republican. I'm going, what? What are you talking about? That's it, but that's what they push. We need, you got to vote this way. We got to vote that way. We're talking to, no name names. We were talking to somebody last night, and it was so funny because these people say, we're in a revival right now. We're in a revival. And, but their revival is this political action committee they formed. Oh, my God. And they're just having, they're having a get-together. They're having like a political rally is what they're having. What they're calling it revival because it feels good to them because that's what they agree. Um, and so... Think about this. Now, this was something I saw during this week, uh, last week. Anybody, has anybody heard of the, was it Mike Lindell doing the, uh, he has these symposiums where he goes around and talks about the election fraud and, and all this stuff. He goes to churches. First one they did was at, uh, what is it, is it Lakewood Church, Rodney Howard Browns? Is that the pillow man? Yeah, the pillow guy. And, and we, bought a, we bought the My Pillow. Love it. It's the best pillow I've ever had, y'all. I'm just telling you. Um, but, if we had this nice big auditorium building that, you know, I still wouldn't invite him to come do one of those at the church because what place does that have in the church? And so, Paige, go ahead and play that uh, little clip that I got on there for the uh, people that's watching. I can't put it up here, but I'll tell you all about it. Um, so this is, they're at Cornerstone, is it Corner? Yeah, Cornerstone Church in... Uh, <laughs> too. Uh, you have to watch it. So one of the first churches they go to, they go to Rodney Howard Brown's church, Laughing Revival Church. People on the floor uh, barking like dogs and stuff. And they, yeah, they call that the Holy Spirit. I'm going, no, that ain't the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's Kundalini. But anyway, so they, they do that there. Then they, they go to the, another church, I forget where, somewhere out Midwest. And then they now they go to uh, Pastor Hagee's church there, Cornerstone Church in San Antonio. And during the event, what do, they, what do y'all think they start chanting? This is at a church. Let's go, Jesus. No. Let's go, Brandon. In church. Everybody knows what that chant means, right? Okay, F. Joe Biden. That's, that's the chant. That's, that's, it's like the, uh, that's the slogan, you know? Uh, the United States, I, I tell everybody, I say, it, it's so funny that the, the news media did this because it gave people this, this uh, slogan. And really and truly, that's all we need to just, like, take up arms and we'll kill everybody. We just need a slogan because it pulls us all together, you know? It's funny. But it, I saw that, and it's like, that's at a church. That's at a church. You're, you're saying that about, first off, a political leader, whatever. And I think, I think the chant's funny myself, but there's no place in, in the house of God. It, whether it's Saturday, Friday, Thursday, it doesn't matter. It has no place there. Because what are you doing? You're putting, they're there to talk about a man. They're there to talk about a man that his name is not what? Jesus. That's not his name. His, they're talking about Donald Trump. They're talking about how it was stolen from him. Did, did you ever think maybe it was God did it this way for a reason so that maybe you could come back to him? Maybe you could see how bad things could be. But anyway, they're chanting that, and, you know, the church came out and said, well, this, this, this group rented out the church, and blah, 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 blah. No, your people were there. That place was packed. And it was packed. And that's what they're doing. They're chanting, you know, Let's go, Brandon. Why, 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 why not just say what you want to say? Well, that's filthy, but you're implying it. And so it, it's, they put all this, this faith and everything, this trust, this hope, they're putting all their hope in a man, in a man that's going to win an election. Wow. What's that going to do? That's going to help you for maybe four years if you're lucky. I mean, that, that does nothing. But anyway, uh, so I see that, and those are examples of God. You know, we know that God uses men on this earth. We know that God used to in, in what? In the Old Testament. That's the thing. This is discerning of spirits. You, it's not even discerning of spirits. It's just you have to sit back. We talked about the lady last week at the, the other church and uh, where yeah, they're going to pray somebody into heaven through the soul tie. 
what's next? Is it, is it, is it <laughs> Pentecostal church going to start doing purgatory? You know what I mean? If you give us enough money, we'll pray and their soul will be restored to the, to the Father because it's hard times, you know? Is that, is that what they're going to, you know, it's, it's never that, that blatantly obvious, but people still miss that. But then you start to see where they're preaching about a man that's going to deliver us, Donald Trump. And, and I believe the man got saved. I do. I honestly believe it with all my heart. But that's really not any of my business. When you really get down to it, it's not my business. But it's, um, my hope can't be found in him. You know what I mean? And that's where churches, pastors are getting their people, their flocks, hope put in a man. Mm -hmm. They're getting put in people. Whether it's, whether it's Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, that lady from Colorado, I don't even remember her name. The one from Georgia. Um, what's the Boberts from Colorado? And then uh, I don't even remember the lady's name from Georgia. But they're giving, them, they're giving, they're giving it to them. And I, I thank them for it, but I'm not. This, this time we talk about Jesus. It's not the time we want to talk about that. Uh, James chapter four, verse four. This is what James says about. It. He says, "You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? Yes. Oh, but let's have it in the church. Let's talk. No, no, we don't have it in church to talk about. It. Therefore, whosoever there it is again, whosoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy with God." So go on and keep having your political action committee at your church. It, what's the Bible say you're doing? You know? We had the lady last week bust at me on what's wrong with the world hour about talking about every time you come in the church, they were asking for money. She says, I take offense at it. Literally, I thought the lady was kidding. Um, but, you know, it makes me think about um, what's our scripture reference page? Uh, is it 2 Corinthians 3 where Paul says that you're not to give you're, you're, not be, you're not to be compelled to give to the church. You are to give willingly and with a glad heart. Here it is. What we got here? Uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. So let each one give as he purposes in his own heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So tell me how I'm, I'm wrong saying you shouldn't, be forced, you shouldn't be compelled to give when you come to church. You shouldn't. It, but we get so out of line from Scripture because it's something that we want. We see where... We say, well, we like a political candidate. And so we all of a sudden, God's telling us that. Well, why ain't God telling all the other ones that? Mm -hmm. You know, why? And so what they're doing and what they did at this church down here is they've alienated half the population. I mean, really, if you really get down to it, they've taken people, because I was looking at the Twitter feed and all the different social media, all the comments. I love looking at the comments. Them comments are hilarious. Yeah, even, even when they comment on some of our stuff, it's still funny because it's, it's rare, rarely is it fun. I mean, y'all make fun comments, but... I see some other comments, and it's just like nasty, <laughs> but it's hilarious. But it's it, you start looking at it, and all these people, it drives people away from the church. Mm -hmm. One Democrat representative from San Antonio, what's his name, like Joaquin something. He was one of the million of them that ran for the Democrat nomination. And he said, this is why people quit going to organized religion, because that has there's no place for that there. And then he says, they need to start charging them taxes. How are you going to be tax exempt? Mm -hmm. And then you become a, you form a political action committee at your church. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But what, is, what, is, what does James say? He says, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? That's totally at odds with God. And we bring it into the church. And we are, this is revival. Because we're excited about it. Therefore, whosoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy with God. Think about it. It's, um, who are you putting your hope in? I mean, that's it. Who are you putting your, you're, you're coming to church and putting your hope in somebody else. We, we hit bad times. It's bad times right now. Inflation's up. I think Thanksgiving's going to cost like 18 to 20% more than it did last year. Okay. Uh, we have open border. We have all these things that I agree are wrong. But who is my, who is it that I look to? Who is my hope? Who, where do I get my hope from? Jesus. I don't get it from Washington. I don't get it from Columbia and, and our governor. I don't get it from any of those places. I get, it has to come from Jesus, especially when I'm here. When I'm here, when we're having church, it has to come from Jesus. And if it doesn't, it's false. Yes. It is a satanic, it's, it's you're having a satanic revival is what you're having. Yes. It's witchcraft. It's Sue saying it's sensationalism. So anyway, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Um, I'm not going to Bible drill y'all this week like I did last week. I, I, I'm going to try not to. Uh, God puts this stuff in here, and it's so good. So it says, looking to Jesus. Really, did it say that? Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. 
Man, that's okay. Same in my notes too. Uh, for who the joy, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. It says, looking to Jesus. Did it say looking to Donald Trump? No. Did it say looking to Hillary Clinton? No. What about Joe Biden? No. What about Tucker Carlson? No. What about a pastor? No. What about a Sunday school teacher? No. What about an apostle? No. Man, looking to who? Jesus. Jesus. Isn't that amazing? It, how does the church miss it? How do churches miss it? How do Christians miss it? And go, it was so good today. We learned that they're trying to tax us. You know the taxes, they're going to put us up 300 extra dollars a year. Okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's less than a dollar a day. Yeah, it's awful. It's awful, but it's not worthy of talking about on God's time, mm -hmm. right? But that's what. Did you know this? Did you know? And it, I, I don't go to. I don't go to church to get my my Fox News update. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it's ridiculous. It makes me sick. It it's. Oh, but anyway, Acts chapter two verse twenty one. This is fun. Acts chapter two verse twenty one says, "And it shall come to pass." This is a repeat of what we heard earlier. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you whosoever? Are you one of those that calls on the name of the Lord, or do you call on Donald Trump? Do you call on Hillary Clinton? Do you call on Joe Biden? Who are you calling on? Are you, do you call on Pfizer? Do you call on Merck? Do you call on AstraZeneca? Do you call on Johnson & Johnson? Well, you know, I got a headache. I got a headache. I need Johnson & Johnson. No, go drink a glass of water and tell the headache to stop in Jesus' name. And look, watch what happens. It's amazing. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that's who's going to be saved. Looking to who? Jesus. It's in the Bible. It's the strangest thing. It, it's just, oh, it's the strangest thing. But he, I mean, even, even um, when you think about it, let's look at Romans 10, 13. That's another fun one. Y'all won't believe what it says. Yeah. For whosoever, whoso, are you a whosoever that calls on the name of the Lord? What happened? You'll be saved. Wonder why it's in there so many times. He repeats it for emphasis. Right. It's just like boom, boom. It's in there. And there it is again. And there it is again. Why? Because God knew we'll start looking to somebody else. God knew that his, that his pastors, his apostles, his teachers, his evangelists, they'll start looking to somebody else to get what they need. But who do we call on? Who do we call on? We have to call on Jesus. Think about this. Y'all know Jesus. He had a guy. Y'all know he had two Simons with his, in his uh, ministry? Y'all know there was one was Simon what? Everybody knows him. Simon Peter. Who was the other Simon? The Zealot. Do y'all know who the Zealots were? They would be like the political action committee for Israel back in the time of Jesus. They were the ones that were, they were like the Jew ninjas. You know what I mean? Jewish ninjas. I say it like that. I mean, they're, they're going to go and they're going to kill Romans. I mean, that's what they did. They killed Romans. Romans were bad now. Romans were bad. And uh, they, you know, because they're going, come out. They're going to overthrow. That's their purpose is to overthrow. Jesus brought a zealot into his circle. Wow. Why do you think he did that? So that he could show we don't follow the zealot. The zealot follows me. Jesus yeah. said the zealot follows me. I don't follow the zealot. Amen. So why do churches today think there's some kind of glory in following the zealot? There's an example. Everything that you need I'm serious, y'all. When, when something happens in your life, get on your phone. Everybody's got, everybody got a phone? Even Miss Dorothy's got a phone. Y'all, The rest of y'all better have a phone. And she knows how to use it, too. Um, but everybody can get on your phone, Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, whatever you use, and say, what does the Bible say and then about, and then put in your situation? It's amazing. And you'll get like 7,000 different sections of what, it, what, it's, what God says about it. You don't even have to do the work anymore. That's why when we, when we die, we go stand before God. There's no excuse, y'all. There's no excuse. God's going to say, didn't, didn't I give you a phone? Didn't, I mean, didn't I give you a phone? You're like, well, God, I didn't know I didn't have a Bible, man. I didn't have a Bible. Right? There's 757,000 apps that have the Bible on it. Yes. Whoa. What, didn't you have Google? I saw you Googling those dirty pictures. Well, uh, well Google can find those faster than it can the Bible. Uh, yeah, then Google. What does God say about me looking at dirty pictures? Oh, and it, it'll tell you. It'll tell you exactly what God says about it. There's no excuse. You know what I mean? But Jesus and his, his disciples, they didn't follow the zealot. What they do, they converted the zealot. Think about that. They took that zealot and they said, this is not the way. Let me show you how we do this. We got to reach people for God. We got to let them know there's a better way. Not, yeah, we're going to take them down, man. Did you know they're doing this? Did you know they're doing that? No, they didn't. They didn't stir up God's time with that. 
there's more important things for, for people to do for, for God. So anyway, Amen. isn't it amazing? Yeah. It's incredible. It's amazing how quickly we can, get on, we can get on the wrong track. So the meaning of it all, this is um, when you really get down to it, the meaning of everything, the whole bedrock. What is the bedrock? Let's ask it like that. What's the bedrock? What is the, uh, what's the one thing that, like, if you didn't know any other verse, in this world, you only knew one verse of scripture, and you were gonna go witness to somebody. What is it? John three sixteen. John three sixteen. What's it say? For what? For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have what? Eternal life. That's it. That's all we need. So, for God so loved the world that He gave what? Donald Trump. God so loved the world that He gave Joe Biden. God so loved the world that He gave Hillary Clinton. Term. What about Tucker Carlson? Mm -hmm. You know, he's got the highest rated show on cable television. <laughs> he tells it so true, he can't even sell commercials, yet they keep him on there. Isn't that weird? Can you ever think you're being deceived? Because yes. that's what they say. He tells it like it is. He can't even, they can't even sell advertising on his show because he's so controversial. So you mean to tell me Fox News, the biggest news company in the world, of course, you know they're all owned by three people, right? All the news companies. Exactly. Uh, the biggest news organization on earth takes their prime time, biggest money making spot and lets a guy have it that they can't even sell commercials for. How stupid are you? If you believe that, how stupid are you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really? Yeah. But he tells it like it is. He's going to pull us out of it. No. It's right there in your Bible. Yeah. Whosoever calls on his only son, whosoever believes in Jesus, they won't perish. They'll have eternal life. It's amazing how that works, isn't it? It's absolutely amazing. Uh, so let's look here. Oh, look there, I didn't silence my phone. Isn't that funny? Somebody's actually calling me. I bet it's a uh, telemarketer. Isn't that great? So are you a whosoever? Let's go over to John chapter 6. This is amazing. Do you all know all this is in here? John 6, 35 through 37 is uh, it's pretty good too. John, John chapter 6, 35 through uh, 37. This is Jesus talking. He says, What? I'm the bread of life, and whosoever comes to me shall not hunger. Wow. You ever, anybody ever fasted? Mm -hmm. What happens when you get hungry, don't you? It starts to hurt sometimes. Like, especially like the third day, if you're doing one of those, it starts to like, you know? And so, what do you do? That's the time you pray, right? I'm the bread of life. Whosoever comes to me shall never hunger. You have to ask him, Hey, Lord, can you, can you help me out? That's why he says this thing. Are you coming to me? And he says, uh, whoever believes it, whosoever believes in me shall what? Never thirst. I be darned. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me uh, will come to me, and whosoever comes to me, I will, no, I will never cast out. I will by no means cast out. Whosoever comes to me. He didn't say whosoever comes to Pilate. Whosoever comes to Herod, whosoever goes to whoever the, the Pharisee of the month is, whoever's the priest this year. He didn't say that. He said, whosoever comes to me. Whosoever comes to Donald Trump? No. Whosoever comes to the Republican Party? Ron DeSantis? No. No, whosoever comes to me, whoever comes to Jesus, he said, I'll never cast you out. I'll never hurt you. All I have is what? Good. I only, I only have blessing for you. Isn't it amazing? That's Jesus. Isn't Jesus good, y'all? Let's give him a hand. Let's give Jesus a hand. Thanks, God. I mean, he's so good. It is just, it's, it's sad what people do to distort it. Let's jump over to Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. Y'all, I'm telling you, this stuff is it's in your Bible, and it's amazing. Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. It, you know, there, there's what? There's no, there's no other name that people can call for salvation. It don't matter. Don't matter how, I mean, think about it. We're over here worried about Donald Trump. We're over here worried about Ron DeSantis. It, and, and meanwhile, you got people in China being killed because they stand on the name of Jesus, because they know this is the only thing that's going to pull me out. Mm -hmm. There's people, I mean, look at, look at the, the, the missionaries that we support. They could go to jail for telling people about Jesus. Amen. They're not over there going, don't worry, I'm from the United States. We're going to get Trump back in. Everything's going to be great. <laughs> Everything will be great when we get Donald Trump back in. I'm telling you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, they don't. I'm, I'm sure when they go evangelizing to people, they got to be secretive, but I'm sure they don't go. Donald Trump gets back in. I'll tell you all about Jesus then. But let me tell you how great Donald Trump is. 
You know what I mean? Because you can talk about that. You can't talk, don't talk about Jesus. So Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. Isn't this stuff crazy? I mean, it's in the Bible. It is in there. So um, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. He says, uh, for whosoever would save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. That's two more than whosoever's. Whosoever, man, isn't that amazing? I'm going to read that one more time. I mean, it's absolutely, for whosoever would save his life will lose it. So all, you think about all these people, all these preachers, all these people in church sitting there today, probably right now, still talking about President Trump, talking about election, talking about my rights, my this, my that. Who are they worried about? Me, 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 me. What did Jesus say? Whosoever hmm, would save his life will lose it. That that's you, you're in you're you're getting into you're getting into the waters of damnation because you're putting your faith in something other than Jesus to pull you out of something. There's nothing wrong with voting. There's nothing wrong with supporting someone. But when that's the focus of life rather than Jesus, and y'all, I can stand up here and talk about a car and pull Jesus into it. Okay, that's you know what that's called manipulation. That's what that's called. But anyway, uh, and then he says what? But um, Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. That's where you get to the point where it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's in office. I got Jesus, and I got to go tell somebody about him. You know what I mean? I thank God for times like this because people are so irate. People are upset. No matter where I go, it's funny. Uh, Republican people are upset. Conservative people, liberal people are upset. And it's like, what are you, what's wrong with y'all? You know, I mean, why are you upset you won? Because they won't shut up about it. Why are you upset? Because they stole it. And it's like, so? I, let me tell you about Jesus. So we start talking about that. I talked to, I, I know I told most of y'all about it. I may have stood up here and talked about it. I talked to a guy, uh, DeAndre. I met him in, in Atlanta. And we were talking, y'all know me, my favorite topics, race, politics, religion. I always finish on religion because I want to finish in a good, you know, good will. And uh, so we started talking about it. He's telling me, he said, I'm African American. I said, where are you from in Africa? And he says, what do you mean? I said, well, you're African-American. I said, I know some African-Americans. They used to work with them at, Pe <coughs> at Pepsi. They, they were from Nigeria. He just looked at me. I said, where were you born? He said, right here in Atlanta. I said, okay, so if you're African-American and I'm, we'll just say, German-American, I don't know. I said, here we are. Mm -hmm. I said, but guess what? Where were you born? What nation were you born? And he said, America. I said, me too. Now look, now we can be like this because there's nothing separating us. I said, you got to quit watching the news, man. I don't really watch the news. I said, but immediately, there's a difference there. We have a difference. When we can be like this, I said, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. So then we start talking. He tells me at the end of the conversation. He said, I asked God last night. And this is one of them days I was mad because I've been, there, I've been out there all day and I shouldn't have been. But people held me up. So always look for that divine appointment. Don't show yourself so much that, you know, showing you're behind that you missed the opportunity God puts in your way because I almost do some days. And, um, he says, I asked God to send me somebody to talk to about the very exact things we're talking about right now because it's uncomfortable stuff people don't like to talk about. But what are we talking about? It's Jesus that unites us. You know what I'm saying? Not Donald Trump, not anybody else. They're not, they're, they can unite us financially when things turn around and stuff like that and the economy does good. But those are cycles. We're not to pay attention to those. Uh, man, i got to get moving. So who then do we, who, who do we put our hope in? Donald Trump? Joe Biden. No. Hillary Clinton? No. What about Tucker Carlson? No. Darn. Page? No. Okay, yeah, you're right. I'll be darn sorry, honey. They're on to us. Um, but, you know, when it, when it comes to our worship, we're, we're to put our entire focus, everything on Jesus, right? But when it comes to the worship, our work, y'all know that, y'all know, does anybody know what the greatest example of worship in the Bible is? This is so beautiful. The answer, if you won't, I'll probably tell you wrong, because today this is what it is to me. Um, so no, let's go to Luke chapter 7. This, to me, this is, this is you got John 3.16, then you get into this. This is some of the most profound thing I've ever seen in my life, okay? This is the story of the, uh, the lady that, that came and she poured the, she had the alabaster box. And think about that her, this worship she did was so amazing. Jesus said whenever the gospel's preached, her story will be told. This is not, this is one of the few things that's in all four gospels. This this account is in, that's how important it was to God. Isn't that amazing? So this woman she takes 
pretty much the only thing she really had. So let, let's read it. She says, it says here, uh, verse 36, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And check this out. When you look at some of the, I think it's in Matthew, it says Simon the leper. Simon, or Matthew don't even identify him as a Pharisee. He was a leper that Jesus prayed for and he got cleansed. All right, so then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went to the Pharisee's house, and he sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner. What would y'all say a woman in the city, a woman of the city is? A prostitute. Prostitute, harlot, something like that. Uh, it says, when she knew that Jesus was at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster flask, alabaster flask of fragrant oil. She brings this stuff. And it says, and he uh, and stood at his feet behind him weeping. She began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisees who invite, I mean, think about that. It didn't matter to her. She's in the Pharisee's house. They couldn't be around these people. You know what I mean? They couldn't be around sinners, these nasty people, especially somebody like that. This is the dredge of society, which probably half of them go see her and pay her anyway. I mean, think about that. You know what I mean? And and so she goes into the house. She don't care who's there. It doesn't matter to her who's there. She didn't go, I got to get in there because I heard Simon Zealot might be there. You know, he's going to overthrow Rome. Mm -hmm. She didn't do that. She didn't go, Herod might be there. You know, this guy's friends with Herod. I need it. He's friends with Herod. You know, don't you know who he is? I got to get in there. She didn't do that. Only thing that mattered, my Savior is there. Something that's in me. Something that's in me. Don't you remember being called when the Holy Spirit called you? And it's something, there's just something in there that's drawing you to this guy. I don't know what it is. It's, at first, for me, I hated him. It was like, I can't stand it, but I can't stop. It's like I'm, I'm being pulled in like a tractor beam, you know, <laughs> pulling me in. And it's like, what's going on? It's just like that with this lady. It didn't matter who was there. She might get kicked out. She could get beat for being there. It didn't matter. All that she knew, this man can change my life. Nobody else can change my life but this man. I have seen amazing things. And this man is the source of it all. And so her tears, think about how many tears. How many tears do you cry to be able to wash somebody's feet? That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's the repentance happening. That's, I got to have what, he, what he's selling. <coughs> Whatever it is he's got, I got to have it. It doesn't matter what it is. She wasn't worried about Pilate. She wasn't worried about Herod. She wasn't worried about any of the other people. She didn't say, well, who's the, who's the, the chief Pharisee this month? It didn't matter. The only thing that mattered was I found Jesus. I've got Jesus right here, and this is what the Holy Spirit told me to do, and I'm doing it. It doesn't matter. What, what did God tell me to do? How did God want me to worship? What can I do? Because this is your reasonable sacrifice. So it says, Then the Pharisees who invited him saw this and spoke to himself. Said it in his mind. This man, if he were a prophet, would know what manner of woman this was that was touching him, for she's a sinner. So you have this beautiful moment where God's doing something. Something amazing. Transformation's happening. And what does the church, what does the, the, the church say? Doesn't he know who she is? They stole that. You know, she stole from so-and-so. No, she's coming to God. And Jesus answered him. He said, I got something to say to you. And then he laid it on him. You know what I mean? But it's, it's that, that moment of worship this lady had. Some, some gospels say it was Mary. Some just say it was the lady of the city, Mary Magdalene, the one that uh, the demons came out of. Right. And you look at it, and where was her hope? It wasn't, in, it wasn't in the politician of the month. Her hope was not in the, the, the rich man that she sees on Friday night when his wife's away or when he gets away from his wife. It wasn't on the farmer that comes to town to sell his good and shacks up with her for the weekend that pays her bills and gets her food. It wasn't on any of that. She took the most valuable thing she had and she gave it to the Lord. That was her sacrifice. She said, Lord, I hope this is acceptable to you. She washes his feet. She anoints him for what? For his burial. She's following the Spirit. She's following, that's discerning right there we talked about in Sunday school. But all she knew that, that she, had, she had to get to him because there was something different about him. Um... So as we get ready to close, y'all stand with me and get ready to close. Isn't this amazing? John chapter 6. I'm going to read this one more time. John 6, 37. It's, um, it, it, where is our focus? What is our focus on? Jesus said, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whosoever comes to me I will no wise cast out. How about that? Isn't that absolutely amazing? 
I mean, it's, it's, it's so beautiful what Jesus says. He, you know, you come to me. I'll never cast you out. I'll never cast you down. Don't worry about everybody else. Don't worry about your boss. Don't worry about your friend. They, they, they can help you a little bit, but they can't help you with what actually matters, you know. Um, so as we get ready, we'll, uh, if anybody needs prayer, yes, sir. I feel the Lord wants me to read this for us. This is Jeremiah 17. I think this sums up everything that he's saying this morning. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man, and make flesh his arm, and whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a heath in the desert, and shall not see good come, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, in whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like as a tree planted by the waters that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see heat when the heat comes, but her leaf shall be green and shall be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't God good? I want to be like a spring in the desert. You know what I'm saying? I want to be that refreshment that people can come for and find Jesus. You know what I mean? Let, what is it, what's that song? Let them see you in me with everything that I do. That, that's, the, that's the call that we have. But I like what it says. Jeremiah says there, what the Spirit of the Lord said. He says what? That there'll be like a heap in the desert. you know what a heap is? Excrement. You know what excrement is, don't you? A pile of poop. That's what they're going to be like. Go ahead, Paige. Um, but it, it's, I, that's, that's, what the, that's, what the, that's what God says. When you're following after man, this is what you are to me. Ain't that something? That's in the Bible. So we, ha we have to be aware of that. So we'll pray real quick. If anybody needs anything, you come up. Come up, we'll pray. Whether you need healing in your body, you need to be saved, come up. You might say, I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Come up. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you don't feel God the way you want to. Come up, we'll pray. We'll ask God to restore that relationship in Jesus' name. Yeah, I do feel like there's a block. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all want time to? Y'all want their block to be over, Tom? No. All right, everybody, stretch your hands this way, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, we just. We ask, God, that you release Tom now, Father, yes, from that, that attack of the devil, God, that you, you give him just the, the courage to believe, Father, the courage to stand on your word, God, the courage to find you in every, everywhere he goes in life, God, yes, that whatever, whatever the situation is, God, that you give him, put, put your word in his heart, God, yes, Lord. in Jesus' name, Father. We thank you for what you're going to do in his life, God. Give him a fresh anointing, God. Yes, give him fresh word. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I thought it was great. So no, but I, I don't. I'm just giving you. So I, just, so I want condemnation. I want condemnation. Get out of me now. Get out of me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, come on out of her. In Jesus' name. God doesn't condemn. Come out. In Jesus' name. Shukulabasaka. Come on. You can't. I want that thing that's speaking to her. The one that drives her away. No, that's not, that's not I, condemnation. I, I, Okay, well, never mind. No, but you do have to apologize when you find out what you did something wrong. Oh, I think you do. Thank you. Love you. know what I mean. Don't let the devil beat you up. Oh, I'm not. And don't beat me up either. <laughs> all right, well, let's pray, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for all you do, God. I thank you just for everything, Father. 
In Jesus' name, God, we bless your name, the name that's above every other name, God, that there's no other way for man to be saved except through the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just, we love you. We thank you for all you're going to do. Bless our time as we fellowship, as we go about whatever we do, God. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.